All right, guys, so now we're gonna go over vertebrae. I know I skipped the sternum for now, but I'm gonna go into vertebrae first um, and I'll get the rest done as I can. So let's start with some cervical vertebrae, right? So within the cervical vertebrae, you're gonna have three different types of vertebrae because you have C1, atlas, C2, and then a typical cervical vertebrae. So let's take a look at a typical cervical vertebrae first. The first thing is it's very, very happy to see you. See, it's got a little smile right there and the little eyes. So this is how you know it's a cervical vertebrae. It's always happy to see you. So that's because a cervical vertebrae has foramina right here, these foramina that a typical other, like a, a thoracic vertebrae is not gonna have. A lumbar vertebrae is not gonna have that. So the cervical vertebrae stands out because of that um, transverse, pros, transverse foramina. Another um, thing about um, cervical vertebrae is that it has a bifid spinous process. So the spinous process in the back is divided into two. So in some, it looks like a whale tail. Others, it's very subtle, but it is divided into two. It's not a solid spinous process like it would be in a thoracic or a lumbar. So that is what makes it different. Now, everything else, is, it's the same. So you have a body of the vertebrae. You have a pedicle and the pedicle is what separates the body from the transverse processes. You have two transverse processes. In this case, you have transverse foramina. Then back here, you have the lamina, the lamina, and then the spinous process. Same thing with a thoracic, thoracic slightly different. You have the body, you have the vertebral foramen, transverse process. So right here, you have the pedicles, pedicle, pedicle, transverse processes and you have the lamina and the spinous process, right? Spinous process. Now, um, you'll notice in this thoracic that it has these two little ears right here. It has two in the top and it has two in the bottom. So those little ears are facets and that's what allows um, the vertebrae to articulate with the vertebrae above and the vertebrae below. So these are gonna be facets and they're gonna form those facet joints. So you can see it from the side there. What makes a thoracic vertebrae different from a lumbar or a cervical other than not having transverse foramina is that on the sides of the body here, there'll be some flat, flat ends on either side. This bone's a little bit worn out, but there's two flat ends on either side and those are gonna be for your ribs as well as in the transverse process, there will be a flat area, like a facet area, and that would be for um, articulation of the ribs. So if it has the articulation of the ribs, you know it's a thoracic, Another aspect is that the spinous process is longer, sharper, and it's usually angled down compared to a lumbar or a cervical. Now a lumbar, they're usually bigger. They're not supposed to have this hole. This is because this one is not real, right? So this is supposed to be solid. So you have your body, again, your pedicles, your transverse processes, and your spinous process and your laminas. And then you can see that the articular facets for the lumbar are a lot bigger and they're kind of angled sideways as opposed to the thoracic where they're angled um, they're angled straight up. So the facets are angled at a different different direction, but you can see that the shape is, is different. Um, so don't go by shape, because I, like I said, I can have um, bones that are the same size from different regions. Now, special vertebrae. We're gonna talk about C1 and C2. So C1 is the atlas. So we talked about the occipital condyles. They're gonna sit they're gonna sit right here on these lateral masses. The C1 vertebrae, the atlas, does not have a body. Instead, it has an anterior arch and an anterior tubercle. So there's a part that sticks out. And the point of that anterior arch is to articulate or joint up with C2. If we go towards the sides, you'll still find the transverse foramina. So still, still cervical vertebrae, transverse processes. And then in the back, instead of having a spinous, it has a posterior arch. So it articulates like so. So I'll take C2 and you can see C2 has this tooth-like projection called the odontoid process, also known as the dents. And that will articulate with that C1 vertebrae and make that pivot joint. So that saying no or moving your head right and left um, would be helped by this um, articulation. So that's a pivot joint and that's called the atlantoaxial joint. So C2 has the odontoid process or the dents and C1 has all those features, no body, anterior arch, posterior arch, lateral masses and transverse foramina.